Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Welcome back. This is part two of whole body cholesterol transport. In the last video, we actually talked about the function of chylomicrons and what they deliver and how they do so. And then we also talked about how the liver is going to make VLDL, which has the purpose of delivering free fatty acids to peripheral tissues, a very similar function to that of the chylomicron. And when VLDLs deliver those free fatty acids to peripheral tissues via the action of lipoprotein lipase, they get converted into an IDL, which is an intermediate density lipoprotein. Now, the intermediate density lipoprotein does return to the liver where it gets acted on by hepatic lipase, and this converts IDL into LDL. Now, this is where we're going to pick up in this video and talk a little bit about LDL and HDL. Now, if we look at low density lipoprotein here, its function is cholesterol transport. Now, before we see the LDL, we have that intermediate density lipoprotein. And really, its only physiological purpose is serving as an LDL precursor. So when it travels back to the liver, the liver is going to act on it via hepatic lipase. Notice what happens. It's going to get rid of a lot of the triglycerides and recycle those. So therefore, the triglyceride percentage actually drops down to 10% in the low density lipoprotein. But the cholesterol percentage increases. And again, this cholesterol percentage is not increasing because the LDL picked up more cholesterol. Okay? It only goes up because, by default, we're dropping the, amount, the percentage of triglycerides. So these, by default, increase. And just so you remember, C here stands for cholesterol that's free. It's non-esterified. The CE stands for cholesterol esters. These have been esterified. So notice that even in the low-density lipoprotein, just like all of these, there's more cholesterol esters than there are free non-esterified cholesterol. Okay? But these two collectively are going to represent all the cholesterol. Okay? So it's about 46% and only 10% triglycerides. Now, what does the LDL do? Well, the LDL is going to deliver cholesterol to peripheral tissues. So peripheral tissues have receptors that can bind LDL. Now the LDL doesn't just give the cholesterol to the tissues and run off. In fact, the LDL gets totally internalized by these cells, like skeletal muscle cells, and it's totally taken in via endocytosis, and then everything within the LDL is then utilized by that tissue. So to understand this, let's take a look at a schematic of receptor-mediated endocytosis. All right, so here is our LDL. Okay, so again, the outer component of this is the polar or hydrophilic part, a lot of its protein and the heads of phospholipids, and then the internal part here is where most of the cholesterol esters are going to be. Okay, that's this yellow part. Now, in order to deliver this cholesterol, the whole thing has to be endocytosed. It has to be internalized. So these cells, let's suppose this is a skeletal muscle cell, they're going to have in their plasma membrane LDL receptors. So these LDL receptors are going to bind the LDL, and they're going to internalize it. So here's our LDL comes in contact with these LDL receptors, and we get internalization. So here we have, we essentially have an endosome right here. So we have components of the plasma membrane. It's now surrounding this LDL particle. Okay? Now, the LDL particle is going to have to be destroyed. And so the way that occurs is once you have this endosome, that contains the LDL, it's going to combine with a lysosome. And this process is not shown right here. Okay? But essentially, once the lysosome combines with the endosome, you have what's called a lysoendosome, and the lysosomal enzymes will degrade all of this. So what you see here is that all these yellow pieces, these are the cholesterol esters, okay? these actually all separate from the protein part of the lipoprotein. You see here the proteins are degraded into amino acids. Those, of course, can be used by the muscle cell or whatever cell internalized this LDL. And then the cholesterol parts are de-esterified. Remember, most of these are cholesterol esters. So one example would be cholesterol oleate. So this oleate is actually a monounsaturated fatty acid. And so really what we mean by esterified is that cholesterol is covalently bonded to this oleic acid or oleate, this fatty acid. 
So in order to get free cholesterol, you of course have to break the bond between cholesterol and the fatty acid. So cholesterol oleate, or just the esterified cholesterol, cholesterol ester, let's say, is hydrolyzed and we break off the fatty acid, which of course can still be used by the cell, and then the cholesterol is moved into the endoplasmic reticulum, particularly the smooth ER. Okay. Um, remember that cholesterol is still hydrophobic, so it's going to have to interact with membranes, which um, are amphipathic as well. And really, the major site of cholesterol processing is going to be the smooth ER. Okay. And this is going to be how the cell receives its cholesterol. Now, once the cholesterol is actually in the uh, smooth ER here, the cell can do anything it wants with it. It can process it into um, other types of molecules. It can send it to the plasma membrane of the cell, which is mostly what it'll actually do if you're a skeletal muscle cell. So the point is, this is how a cell receives cholesterol. Um, it receives it from an LDL in the form of cholesterol esters, but it has to internalize the entire lipoprotein. Okay? All right, so that's LDL. Now, before we go into HDL, I want to talk a little bit more about how this process is regulated. Okay? So, remember that the liver right here is going to release VLDL. Okay? And of course, VLDL is going to deliver fatty acids through the process of lipoprotein lipase and get converted into an IDL. IDL will return to the liver, not shown here, where hepatic lipase converts it into an LDL. Now, there's two fates of LDL. The LDL can either be internalized by a cell that needs it through receptor-mediated endocytosis, that's what we just talked about, or the LDL can just never be picked up by a peripheral cell and return to the liver. And the way that it actually returns to the liver is actually through what's called the LDL receptor. Okay? We'll come back to this um, in a little bit in another video. But what I want to show here is that Notice, if the LDL is not picked up by a peripheral cell, the only other fate for it in healthy individuals is for it to return to the liver where it will interact with LDL receptors and be internalized. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now back to this slide. Remember, there's two fates of low-density lipoprotein, and this plays a role in regulation of how much LDL, or really I should say VLDL, the liver sends out. So what is our total LDL? It's actually pretty simple to think about. It's the sum of the LDL not returned to the liver plus the LDL returned to the liver. Okay? What is the LDL not returned to the liver? Well, that's the LDL that just gets internalized and utilized by peripheral cells via receptor-mediated endocytosis. So again, if it doesn't return to the liver in normal, healthy individuals, it was utilized by cells. So that means the only other fate of it, which is return to the liver, is returned to the liver. And of course, the liver will take up that LDL um, and recycle whatever was in it, okay? So those are the two fates. Now let's think about two situations, okay? Here's our first situation. What if we have low LDL not returned to the liver? Okay, what does that mean? Well, that just means we have a low amount of LDL internalized, meaning that not many of our peripheral cells happen to be taking up that LDL. Okay. That, by default, means that the LDL return to the liver is high. I'm going to repeat that because it's an important concept. If we have a low amount of LDL that's being utilized by peripheral cells, so low amount of LDL internalization, that means that we're going to have a high amount of LDL return to the liver. Okay. Because it has two fates. If it's not being internalized, it has to be returned to the liver. Okay. So if one of these is low, the other has to be high. Let's think about a situation that might cause that. Well, it could just be that the peripheral cells already have enough cholesterol. Okay? So if the peripheral cells already have enough cholesterol, they don't need to be internalizing more of it. Okay? So that means if they're not internalizing it because they already have enough, that LDL is going to return to the liver. And that's very important because when more LDL returns to the liver, that tells the liver the body is already having enough cholesterol. And so the liver can shut down, or at least slow down, its synthesis of cholesterol. If there's already enough cholesterol, why do we need more of it? Remember, the body actually makes, and you'll see different 
numbers um, depending on the source, but the liver makes anywhere between 70 to 90 percent of all the cholesterol. A very small percentage of cholesterol actually comes from the diet. So if your liver is the main powerhouse of making the cholesterol, if your body doesn't need it, then shut it down. It doesn't need to make any more. So when more cholesterol, that is more LDL, returns to the liver, it tells the body we already have enough, so don't make any more. Right? So it's negative feedback. Now we have a second case right here. What if we have a high amount of LDL not returned to the liver? Meaning we have a high amount of LDL internalization. So our peripheral cells are eating up that LDL really fast. Okay? Well, that would imply that we have low LDL returning to the liver. Okay? Because if all this LDL is being taken up by peripheral cells, there's not going to be much returning back to the liver. Now, if a low amount of LDL is coming back to the liver, that tells the liver, hey, that must mean that the peripheral cells are eating that stuff up fast, so I should make more cholesterol. And so if there's low amount of LDL returning to the liver, the liver will upregulate all of its enzymes that are needed for cholesterol synthesis, and it will put out more cholesterol. And remember, it's going to put it out in the form of VLDL, okay? um, because that's what eventually gets us LDL. Right? So this is a very cool system of negative feedback, and it really works because there's two major fates of cholesterol, either internalization by peripheral tissues or return to the liver. And if it's not taken up by peripheral tissues, then it has to be returned to the liver. So a drop in one of these pretty much equals an increase in the other. And so this serves as a way for the liver to indirectly figure out how much cholesterol is needed by the rest of the body. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now that can get out of whack, of course, and we're going to talk about that in future videos. Um, but hopefully you understand a little bit about LDL. Now, we're going to talk briefly about HDL. Um, HDL stands for high-density lipoproteins, and this is going to involve something called reverse cholesterol transport. Okay? Now because we have this thing where high amounts of LDL in the blood are correlated with all sorts of bad things like coronary artery disease, HDL is usually nicknamed good cholesterol, or it's the good lipoprotein. And that's because it performs reverse cholesterol transport. Before we go into that, let's talk briefly about its composition. So high-density lipoprotein is going to contain by far a lot higher percentage of phospholipids and proteins. So initially, this high-density lipoprotein doesn't have a lot of lipids in it. Okay? Um, it doesn't have a lot of triglycerides as we see. It certainly doesn't have a lot of cholesterol. It's mostly phospholipids and proteins, and that's important to understand why. It doesn't have a lot of lipids here because its purpose is to pick up lipids. If it already had a lot of lipids, it couldn't take very much. So it's important that it's mostly these phospholipids and proteins because that way it has some room to pick up other lipids from peripheral tissues. Okay? So with HDL, if there happens to be excess cholesterol, let's say, or other lipids present in the blood, you don't want those lipids actually staying there. They can create a lot of problems, especially if they happen to get um, between the endothelial cells of the blood vessel. Okay? That can trigger a whole series of inflammatory responses and lead to coronary artery disease. So the purpose of HDL is to pick up those excess lipids, particularly cholesterol. Okay? So if there's excess cholesterol in the areas around tissues, particularly in the blood, the HDL will pick up that cholesterol and basically return it to the liver. And it will return to the liver and bind to HDL receptors which basically internalizes the HDL and allows the liver to recycle whatever was there. And that process is called reverse cholesterol transport. Another important function of HDL, which is seldom talked about, but also still interesting and important, is the fact that um, HDL not only delivers excess cholesterol back to the liver, but it will also deliver it back to the adrenal glands and uh, sex organs. So for example, the adrenal glands, particularly the cortex, are important in making steroid hormones. And considering that steroid hormones have a precursor, which is cholesterol, it would make sense if HDL could also deliver the cholesterol to the adrenal cortex. For example, the adrenal cortex manufactures cortisol. Uh, so for example, that cholesterol can be converted to cortisol and be used in uh, that function. Also, the sex organs, such as the ovaries 
and the testes in males. Um, the HDL can also deliver cholesterol to those tissues as well because those tissues also make steroids. Um, in the case of the ovaries in women, those make estrogens and progestogens. Okay? And in men, the uh, testes manufacture androgens such as testosterone. And so all of those steroids have a precursor of cholesterol, so it would make sense if HDL gave those tissues cholesterol. But if those tissues already have enough cholesterol, the HDL will just deliver that back to the liver. Okay, So hopefully this video and also the previous one gave you a good understanding of whole body cholesterol transport. It's a very interesting topic, and hopefully we broke down the composition of these lipoproteins to help you understand their function. Right? So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the next few videos, we're going to go over a little bit of homeostatic imbalances that have to do with the balance of LDL and HDL, and we're going to see that it's a lot more complicated than we once thought. Thank you.